After 15 years of trying to achieve realistic nature in Blender, this is the best way I found to create it. So I was supposed to make a video promoting my brand new Nature Essentials Asset Pack, but you know what, forget that, I'll just show you how to make realistic nature yourself. First, you'll need some reference and textures, so grab your camera and head to your backyard, throw down a blank canvas in the shade for shooting these textures, or just a piece of paper could work. Then start picking some grass blades or weeds to shoot textures for your assets. Shoot a variety of these and you'll be ready to start 3D modeling. In Blender, we'll use the default cube to delete it. Then go ahead and add in an image reference. Open up a grass blade and rotate it in your viewport. Pull it straight down along the z-axis slightly to keep it out of the way. And then go shift A and add in a mesh plane. Scale this way down and place it at the base of the grass blade. Then tabbing into edit mode, grab the top two vertices and pull these out along a grass blade. Here you can use the shortcut by holding control and right clicking to continue extruding out this plane. Scaling when necessary to fit the shape of the grass blade and extruding it all the way along your image. Scaling it down to a point at the tip. You might have to tweak a little bit of these vertices afterwards. But then we quickly have a grass blade model. Now let's throw the texture on it. So drag out a new window and open up the UV editor. Here select the image that we already opened as reference. And then in edit mode on your grass blade, select everything with A and go U project from view. Now you can see our grass blade in the UV editor and we just need to rotate it and scale it along the X axis to fit over that grass blade. Again you might have to tweak these vertices in the UV editor now to follow the grass blade a bit tighter. Then switch this window to the shader editor and click new material. Here, just add in a new texture, image texture, and again, grab that image reference we opened and connect the color to the base color. Bing! We just added a texture to our grass blade. And you can see where I still messed up on the UV unwrapping here a little bit. Idiot. So if you did this too, you'll have to switch back to the UV editor and again, move those vertexes around a little bit to be within the grass blade texture. But now you can hit X and delete that reference texture and add a little bit more detail to this grass blade by going Control R and adding a cut down the length of the grass blade. Pulling this down just a little bit to add some curvature to your grass blade will look a lot better. Move that grass blade to the side and add in a second reference image. This time we'll open up a reference image of the full grass stalk that we shot. Then go ahead and repeat the process again, this time just on the grass stalk here, unwrapping it and throwing the texture on it as well just like before. Then you can duplicate the grass blade that we made, pulling it over to the grass stalk and forming our grass stalk in 3D. Duplicating again and throwing a few blades of grass onto this grass stalk, grab all of them and then the grass stalk last and go control J to make it a single model. Now if you check the proportional ending option on, you can easily adjust this mesh and give it some natural bends and curves. I found twisting it made it look nice to mimic realistic grass. You can also change the shape of proportional editing to sharp. This will sometimes give it some more natural bends. And be sure to edit this in both both views so you have a nice looking 3D object. Now grab that grass stalk and hit E to extrude it down for a little bit of thickness. Then Alt right click an edge loop and go Control B to round off that grass stalk a little bit as well. Do this on a few of the corners to make it look a little bit more round and natural. The last step, which adds a lot of realism, is to duplicate some of those grass blades now, pull it down to the bottom of the stalk and make these some old dead looking blades of grass. Then hovering over those and hitting L to select them, we can make a new material and assign it to these blades of grass. For this material, we'll select the one we already already made, but tab out of edit mode and click the number next to the material to make it its own material. Now if we drag out a new window and open up the shader editor again, we can drop in a color hue saturation node and just take the hue down and the saturation down a bit on this material, as well as the value to make it darker for some dead pieces of grass. Now rotate the blade so it's facing upwards in your scene and make sure it's placed in edit mode over the little orange origin point in Blender. Now in the world tab, if you open up an environment texture for some lighting and choose an HDR from polyhaven.com you can see this rendering pretty well already. Go ahead and add a few more grass blades to this asset and then make a few variations of it as well. Choosing one of these grass stalks and assigning the dead grass to it so we have some variation. Now let's create our own little patch of nature. And to do this, you can download the free G-Scatter add-on for scattering your assets. Just use the G-Scatter link in the video description and download the latest version here. Then within the Blender preferences, under add-ons, install the add-on by clicking install and selecting the G-Scatter zip file. Click install add-on and then just make sure it's enabled under the user installed add-ons. Then it will show up in your properties tab along the right here. Then under the emitter, use the eyedropper to select that plane. So with the grass stalk selected, go control A and apply the scale and rotation to that asset and then click scatter selected. You can see this works like a particle system except it uses geometry nodes and scatters all of your assets on the plane. You have a bunch of flexibility here where you can change the scale and rotation and the distribution. You can crank the density up here. But you can see that the grass is looking kind of flat and not very organic. So pull out a new window and jump to the shader editor again. Grab your grass blades and let's make this material really pop. Start by connecting the color from the texture to the roughness on the principal shader and then adding in a color ramp node. 
flip the black and white values here, take the white down to more of a gray color and increase the black. This will give us a little bit more shine and realistic specular highlights on the grass. Then connect the color output to the normal on the principal shader and then drop in the bump node to control that texture. Move it from the normal to height input and decrease the strength a bit down to a 0.2. And here's where the real magic happens. Add in a new shader, add shader, then add in a second shader, translucent shader. Connect this to the bottom socket on the add shader and this allows light to pass through your objects just like it does on real grass or leaves. Connect the normal output to the translucent shader and the color to the translucent shader as well. And that really pops. Now you can add in the hue saturation node and adjust the color, taking the hue down slightly and increasing the saturation and value to make the color of the grass a little bit more vibrant where the light's passing through it. And you can add some realistic distribution to your grass assets by adding an effect layer. We'll choose the Muse Grave texture as a mask, and you can see what kind of effects this has under the visualize effect layers. You will want to add some subdivisions to your plane so you have more detail for these textures to work. Now just take the scale down on that texture, maybe choose a different random seed until you get some nice grass patches. Then you can grab another one of the grass stalks that you modeled, maybe the one with the dead grass material, and scatter this one as well on the plant. Adding in another Muse Grave texture to handle the distribution, picking a different random seed and scale for this one, taking the overall scale down a bit, and increasing the black value on that texture so we get some grass everywhere across the plant. This looks pretty good, and even better when you add in a little bit of random rotation to it. Go ahead and repeat this process with any sort of grass or nature assets that you created. That's the thing with nature, it can be as wild and crazy as you want and still look really Good. And it looks better the more you throw at it. Here I'm just going to open up the asset browser in the G Scatter add on and scatter some of the assets from my Nature Essentials pack. The seedy grass looks really good, and with one click, you can just scatter that across your scene as well, adjusting the scale and density for a little bit of variation in that grass once you render. Also, adding some foliage to the ground looks really good, so here I'll grab the oak leaves and scatter those. And now I'll scatter possibly my favorite asset, the branches. These just look so good as foliage underneath your grass assets, and really adds a lot of realism to any sort of nature scene and it looks great from every sort of lighting angle. There's a link in the video description for my brand new Nature Essentials Asset Pack, but if you create it yourself, that's cool too. I just hope you had fun with this video and create some realistic nature. That's it for me, guys. See you all in the next video. Peace!